Mina, Kanbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with Psalm 79, another psalm of good old Asaph. I'm just going to start with verse 1. O oh God, the nations have come into your inheritance. Your holy temple they have defiled. They have laid Jerusalem in heaps. The dead bodies of your servants they have given as food for the birds of the heavens, the flesh of your saints to the beasts of the earth. Their blood they have shed like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become a reproach to our neighbors, a scorn and derision to those who are around us. How long, Lord? Will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not know you, and on the kingdoms that do not call on your name, for they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. O oh, do not remember your former iniquities against us. Let your tender mercies come speedily to meet us, for we have been brought very low. Help us, O God, of our salvation, for the glory of your name, and deliver us and provide atonement for our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? Let there be known among the nations in our sight the avenging of the blood of your servants, which has been shed. Now, I don't want to I don't want to put down the message that Asaph is saying here. I see what he's saying. You know, we've been we've been punished. The nations have come in and killed many of us. And that, if you read anything in the book of Judges and throughout also 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, 1st, 2nd Chronicles, there is the repeated, um, I, I, the word escapes me right now, but the repeated story. There we go, that works. The repeated story of Israel falls into sin, other nations come in, take them over, they serve that nation for however many years, and then... They repent, they turn back to God, and then God turns that nation over to Israel. And so Israel successfully rebels against them, comes out on top, and they regain their independence. Then they fall into the cycle of sin, and this repeats itself over and over. What, what, the, first thing that I saw, what, the first thing that I saw when I read this was, God, please forgive us and turn all this vengeance and wrath back on our enemies and help us to destroy them forgive us and pour out your wrath on those nations that's the first thing I saw again not trying to say you know what Asaph is saying is wrong he, it's it's not wrong one it's in the Bible two it is a matter of God's people need to repent when they repent they'll overcome their enemies I agree with that that's true. I don't object to that. It just seems so naturally human to be like, okay, God, would you please forgive us and give, you know, a lot of our lives have been lost to the enemy. Would you please put their lives in our hands? Would you please uh, turn your wrath from us and put it on them? That just seemed like a very, very human reaction. I don't know if uh, my fellow Christians will give me a lot of heat or a lot of hate for this video. But that is what I saw when I read this psalm. It's, it seemed to be just a very human inclination. Theologically correct, yes. I'm going to repeat it for the third time, that you know God's people need to repent. And when they repent, God's, God's wrath will indeed be turned on to um, his people's enemies. Um, since they've repented, he doesn't need to be angry at them anymore. He'll now put them on top, and their enemies will be defeated. That's true. But isn't it just really, really human to be like, you know, God, please spare me and please defeat my enemies? Isn't that just a really human thing to do and say? Um, and of course, one of the things I love to do on this channel is provoke thought and provoke curiosity. Um, so let me know what you think down in the comments below. And let me know what you think of what I got from this psalm, my initial impression of this psalm. I've already said three times, theologically I have no issue with it, I see what Asaph is saying, but the humanness of it, the humanness of what Asaph is saying is very, very seeable, and I think it would also be an understatement to say that the Bible reveals the humanness of its human characters on a regular basis, and not just their humanness, their sinfulness and their wickedness as well. The Bible doesn't try to hide those things either, although in this case, no wickedness is shown, good theology is shown, and God's people do need to repent, so that when God's judgment falls, um, his people are not consumed with it. Um, his people should be purified through judgment. They should rise up and stand up strong through judgment, uh, not be destroyed with the wicked 
in judgment because they're wicked themselves. That is not the way it should go. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you very much for giving me the time of day by watching this video. I love you and God bless.